as always, Ted, kicks off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? I've got to go with Cal. Um, they're playing USC this week. I was about to say, what? I it's They're playing USC at the perfect time. USC's lost two straight, Notre Dame, Utah. And there are distractions galore around the USC football team right now. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, even though it's not like the Caleb Williams shutting it down for the rest of the season conversation is nothing that he started. And I would say that I probably don't think it's something that he's going to do, but the fact that it has been a conversation, whether or not he started it or not, the fact that it's a conversation is hanging over the heads of the players in that locker room. You know that they hear it. He's probably said, listen, guys, I'm not, I'm playing the rest of the season with you. I'm, 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 I'm here with my teammates, but it does put the question in the air for, for the rest of the squad. It's just another distraction. And then your head coach hadn't been there the first two weeks of the or first two game, first two practices of the week. There we there go. There you go. Way to go. Um, that's a big deal for an offensive. The, the guy that calls the plays. Uh, forget that he's the head coach. Uh, you can navigate that, but he's the game plan and play caller for them. Like the one specialty that they have right now is their offense. And the fact that Lincoln Riley's missed the first two days of practice because of an illness is I, that's hard game plan wise, not to mention the, you know, what storm it's created around the program out there about what is he doing? Is he leaving? Is he going to the NFL? I it's just, it's not a good time right now in the USC locker room. This is upset special for Cal. Like if you're going to beat him like right now is the time to beat him. And if that happens, think it's bad out there right now. Oh, buddy, it's going to fall apart. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on with Lincoln Riley in the health situation. Right? Uh, what they say, he's at home under doctor's orders. I I don't know what that means. I mean, does he have the flu? Does he have COVID? I who knows. But this is what I do know. Game planning wise, I I don't think it's exactly a collaborative effort out there. Right? I think it was mainly him putting all that stuff together. And always has been. Always has been. And the one thing that's interesting, and I'm sure, right, they're trying to elevate Kingsbury to an on-field role, right? Which, by the way, he looks great in a bucket hat. So all <laughs> kinds of clips of him. He's rocking the bucket hat. He looks fantastic. But, and this is something that a lot of people may not know, but, like, Lincoln Riley, as far as the signals, that he has he has a, a language with his quarterbacks. That essentially only him and his QBs know. And it's nothing. It's like he just. And it's does strange. Like this. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's a lot of it is the guys anticipating, like they're so used to it. They do it in the, the meeting room. And there's only, it's Lincoln Riley, maybe a QB assistant in there. It's probably Cliff, honestly. So maybe he, maybe he knows the language and it's not that big of a deal. But, that was something we were told year in and year out when he was at OU. Was it like, hey, he's got this language, and there are very few people that know how to interpret it. Yeah. So when you think about removing that guy, it's it's not an ideal set of circumstances for the Trojans right now, which I know breaks so many hearts of the people <laughs> that listen to this podcast. Yeah, it, it's they're in a they're in a uh, they're in a tough spot, man. They really are. And I think, I think deep down the, 
the staff out there like knew that this was coming at some point or kind of knew their capabilities and knew what the back half of this the schedule looked like and you know maybe they can hold it together but if things started to crack early it this it's going to be a runaway runaway freight train on them because this is the easiest game that they have left and it ain't easy right now cal can definitely win this football game yeah i'm sure sure people will have eyes on that one all right who do you is your loser of the week gotta go with michigan mm. gotta go with michigan now the this has been a huge story and it's it's spun out for anyone that don't doesn't know where have you been but uh cheating allegations against michigan's uh signal stealing from from other teams um supposedly going buying tickets at at away at other teams games and videoing the other sideline to get the signals for the play calls and um the whole thing is really blown up on him. Harbaugh said he doesn't have any involvement, doesn't know anything about it. Maybe that's true. Um, it's just, to me, it it is just optically way worse than what it actually is. Not that it's a good thing, but this it's a bad time for Michigan to have to to go on the defensive for this. And honestly, I don't know what the implications of what has happened and what the evidence says. And the big 10 has come out and said that they don't have to wait on the NCAA to make a ruling. What that might be. I have no idea what that ruling may be, but it's not going to be a good situation for Michigan for, for public perception alone. And for Harbaugh, uh, you start, looking at how long stuff like this this sign stealing operation has been rumored to to go it really coincides with the the streak of Michigan taking it to the next level so i don't know what comes of it but it is a bad situation for Michigan i i agree now i think that I think if what they were, what they have been accused of doing, right, what they have allegedly done, I think if it ends up being true, I kind of think they're going to get hammered, right? If they had someone that was sending people or going himself and filming opponent sidelines during games, like that's cheating. That's that's different than gathering what you can gather from the all twenty two from the TV copy and stealing signals within the game it's different right i some people say oh everyone's doing this no they're not no they're not a bunch of teams aren't sending people to other teams games to film their signals from the stands or at least by what do you mean by a bunch of teams i i would be surprised if there were more than like five teams in the power five doing that I'd be surprised if I'd be surprised if in in most of the top 25 teams weren't doing it to some degree. This like is have some you, teams. Have you seen the Here's the question after you. Do you think odds makers are bad at what they do? No. Do people set in the lines? You think they they have a pretty good understanding of what they're doing? Yes. Michigan. It started three years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Against the Big Ten since twenty twenty one, they're seventeen five and two against the spread. That is a statistical anomaly. It's almost like they knew what plays the other team was going to run, or they had some very large competitive advantage. You go look at Bama's numbers. You go look at Georgia's numbers. You go look at all these other teams' numbers. They don't look like that against the spread. They're all very close to 500. Yeah. I Which that, that statistic, it's like, oh, 
they're just the best team against the spread ever. That is fishy to me. That well, makes me think they were doing something that no one else is doing. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I Here's the thing about big-time college football. There is a lot on the line, a lot of money on the line, a lot of pressure on the line. And when it's as easy as – like cell phones have changed the game for sure. And when it's as easy as putting someone in the stands and having video in the other sideline for their signals, does it cost a lot of money? It's not some huge investment you have to make in the program. It's, it's essentially free data. Now you're breaking the rules, or at least I think you're breaking the rules. I think they may have changed some of it as far as, as what you're allowed and not allowed to do. I haven't been able to get clarity on that so far, but man, I just, I, I know that there are, there are teams that are doing everything they can to level the playing field. And I'm not saying that everyone does it like, like for example, Michigan, they're not going to find what the they're not putting people in the stands. I would imagine to see what uh, Boston College is is doing on the on the signals or you know Central Michigan. But there's there's three four games in a schedule that you're trying to find any edge you can, and I think a lot of teams get all of the information that they can. How many? I don't know, but I would say it's it's more than just a handful. All right. That's why every team in college football goes to extraordinary links on the sideline to try and keep their guys hidden. I'm with you. Just put just put speakers in the damn helmets. They're doing it in the bulk in the postseason. I saw that. Right? I I don't know what's gonna happen to Michigan. But what they were doing, maybe they're not the only one doing it. Maybe I'm just naive. The against the spread numbers are suspicious to me, though, okay? Very, yeah. very suspicious. But I think when you look at it, hopefully this will get comms in the helmets, right? And that'll just be commonplace in the Power Five. But this is, and a lot of people have pointed to that video of Michigan's players, right? And Stallions in the background of the Ohio State game last year, right? On the first drive of the game. Mm-hmm. Jim Harbaugh. Here's the point, though. The, the the clip that everyone's talking about was a touchdown by Ohio State. So, I, you may know the concept that they're 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 running, and like there's a difference between knowing it and getting the perfect call, and everyone on the field knowing it. Like if you could walk out there and tell your guys what play they're running, that's different. Like essentially, the most you could do is signal in the best call for that if that's what it is I, it gives you an edge but it's not everything it is however like just knowing runner pass as a defense is a massive advantage if if you are playing defense and you don't know forget the signals by formation by body language if you don't know what the play is especially in the second half if you don't know what the play is that they're about to run you are behind you have problems. Uh, you you better have it boiled down to like one, two, or three plays in your head that they're about to run on you. If you don't have that, then you're about to get your ass blocked or exposed. I just don't know what's going to happen to Michigan. This I think they're the best team in the country. I've been really impressed. I think they're really good. But now they got this whole thing hanging over them. And I don't know whether to blame just Connor Stallions or the entire staff, blame Harbaugh. Like, how much did Harbaugh know? I find it very difficult to believe he didn't know what was going on here. But it is a massive distraction for that football team. And you could say it's going to make them go, oh, no, everyone's against us. It's us versus the world. I mean, everyone thinks they're cheaters now. 
Yes. That it, has a that has an effect on a football team. It does. And at a minimum, I people maybe that didn't know about it, which there's a lot of things that there's a lot of ch- chatter in college football between coaching staffs that never see the light of day. Right. And I would be shocked if this was a, a well-known thing, you know, especially with their rivals. Right. But at a minimum, it's going to be very difficult for them to get any signals on anyone again. Right. I imagine you're going to go totally new set of signals that you have. Uh, against Michigan and probably different ones first half and second half. Just use the wrist, man. Any good defense, I if you're if you're if you have signals, if you're hand signaling stuff in, it's it's in my opinion it is a travesty if you're if if you haven't picked up on a good portion of those by the end of the football game if they haven't if they haven't changed them, right? If they just have like a one set of signals through a football game, you should be picking up on that by at least the second half. I just don't know what's going to happen. Like, is this a, it feels like a big deal. I know. Like, does, does Michigan end up vacating both of their big 10 championships? Like I, do they lose a bunch of scholarships? Do they get a bowl band? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. We've never seen this. I know the there's like a really wide a a wide like spectrum of what the punishment could be. I I could see them I I don't know. There seems to be between some people. I know like the people that are writing stories about it, it's be it's getting pretty outlandish, but there's also a group of people that seem to think that they haven't broken any rules. So, yeah, Michigan fans. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I I honestly I don't know I don't know what it could be. Did you see the stuff on the Tennessee message board? Yeah, the guy saying breaking that it was going on. What was that like a year ago, year, a year or two ago. ago? Last last season. So it was started text or started messaging about it in like the late season of twenty two. And then, like, right before the championship game, I think, or whatever, but um, pretty much laid it out there. It is interesting in that post, he said that apparently there's no communication with any of it to Harbaugh. Like, that was a point in that post. Stallions is standing awfully close to Harbaugh at a lot of that stuff. It may, maybe he kept a degree of separation. I, I think that's what it is. I think it's like, I don't want to know. know. I don't want to know. I can't know. Uh, I've heard that you guys are good at it. You've got a system going on, but yeah, which I don't think I, he shouldn't be standing next to, I, I know he's standing next to Harbaugh, but that's kind of the wrong person to be standing by. Well, no, he's mostly standing next to the defensive coordinator. Right. Yeah. And, and he's the got defensive the coordinator the- is listed to what he's telling him and then relaying the call it I. Once again, I don't know how big of a deal it is. I don't know what's going to happen to Michigan. All I know, I think they were cheating. And you, you may be right. Maybe more teams are doing this than I thought, than I think. And if that's the case, can you imagine how nervous the people that were carrying out those operations for the other schools are? Oh, my gosh. Hopefully, they were a little more thorough. Especially whenever like it got out and – they checked like the ticket purchases and saw that he had used his name. I bet every, every team out there is like cross-checking like a lot of any staffers names in their ticket system. Oh yeah. That's why I'm telling you if, if, (laughs) if it's pervasive and it starts to be found out that it's pervasive, Look for the uh, the decision to be made instantly to go to speaker system instead of like some big, like across like some big, like, a bunch of pe- big scandal across college football. You know, like 
there becomes a point where it's like, yeah, let's just move on to uh <laughs> to, to helmet stuff. Yeah, I I'm very interested to see how this entire thing plays out. I Anything else on it? I, no, I I think until we hear from from someone in in authority, NCAA or Big Ten, I don't know what else. I we, we kind of know what happened. It's you just kind of wait to hear from someone that that's going to make some type of ruling on it, right? The best part is the card, which I is real. The photographer has said it on Twitter. The guy that took the picture said he did not doctor it anyway. Of the card of the signals on it, the diagram of the signals. I think every sideline should have that. <laughs> every sideline should have that. If they're over there signaling and someone has picked up on when they do this. Yeah, no, running. but they're like printed out little diagram guys. It's before yeah. the game. Well, okay, that's what I'm saying though. If you play, if we play Texas Tech and Texas Tech, we think uses the same signals and we've been able to pick up on them. I think everyone should have a card. Hell, I think the players should have a card on their wristband. All right. If they're signaling it in and you can see what the signals are and like you could build a database on it, but you build a database on every other kind of information there is out there, personnel packages, down in distance formation all of that stuff to get tendencies i don't know why you wouldn't do it on signals as well outside of going against the rules right i think the uh i think the debate here is not hey do does everyone steal signals yes but i think everyone did it from the all 22 from the tv copy and within games and maybe right. talking to other teams right but what i don't I'm think they're is the play sheet uh, looks espionage. bad. Right. The play sheet looks bad, like the signal sheet looks bad. But in I do not think that that is indicative of of like a big cheating operation going on. I would bet that most teams have that. See, man, I disagree. I've never seen that. I've I've never seen a group of players react the way that Michigan's players reacted in that clip on the first drive of the game. It's my what sixth year on the sideline. And remember, this is like a low level guy on that staff and every player is standing near him listening to what he's saying. That doesn't happen on OU sideline. And I can't recall it happening on any sideline now, maybe it's just because I haven't been looking for it. But the first drive of the game, I don't know. I clearly, I, I think this, I think what Michigan was doing is cheating. You kind of, it seems to think like you're more of the gamesmanship portion. But I, I just I think the, I think going, I think going to a, I think going some, like having someone in the stands and videoing the signals. Is, I think that's cheating. Yes. We agree. I Yes, I think that that's cheating. Okay. But I think there's there's a lot of things that you see from Michigan that are not – because of the accusations, everything that you see out there, people are trying to say, see, look. I'm just saying that a lot of the things that you've seen that they're trying to show as evidence – is not evidence at all that a team is cheating. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I think you, you should be able to build a database of what people's signals are without going and putting someone in the stands and videoing what they're doing. That's what I'm saying. And all I'm saying is the against the spread numbers don't add up. <laughs> right. That's all right. I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. That was a lot on Michigan. We'll see what happens. I, they could get a slap on the wrist. They could get hammered. I, I don't know. It feels like it's not to keep going, but it feels like it's going to be a heavy because it's such a, it's such a big story that I would be shocked if they came down light on them. And Jim Harbaugh and Michigan aren't exactly in the good graces of the NCAA currently. That's right. That's right. The cheeseburger. <laughs> All right. Let's.